Okay, you've located the experienced personnel and asked them your questions and asked if you look good to go. And when you get the go-ahead, press cycle start and then immediately press feed hold. This gives you a moment to see the spindle spinning and the coolant jets blasting on the end of tool one. Good. It lets you see that your program has advanced partway through and it gives you a moment to press this position button. Here you are in your program. Look at the line that says Z 9.7. This means that I am currently 9.7 inches above zero. And I can glance into the mill and confirm that by looking over. Yeah, the end of tool one does look like it's about 9.7 inches above the top of my program. And here top of my program means top of my stock where I touched off with the probe, thus defining zero. Okay, great. Hit cycle start and keep your hand over the feed hold button. And as the tool covers about half that distance, hit feed hold again. And look at that. Now I'm at 4.9 inches. Half of 9.7 is pretty close to 4.9. This is starting to feel nice and logical. If things are still feeling good, press cycle start and let the tool cover half the distance again and then press feed hold. Here we are at 1.5 inches above zero. I'm getting close to my zero point. If I'm going to crash into anything, I'm going to crash into it in 1.5 inches. Let's turn off the coolant and take a closer look. There we are. With the coolant off, it's easy to see how far up I am. Press cycle start and cover half the distance again. You should be under an inch now. And notice how I'm never looking at the controller screen if the mill is moving. If it's moving, I'm watching the mill. If I want to look at the screen, I press feed hold so that nothing is changing position. And then I look over at the screen. Okay, now I want you to play a bit of a game. Press cycle start and then feed hold in quick succession and see if you can creep up on z equals zero. All of this is a chance to get comfortable with what the mill is doing so that you can establish familiarity with its patterns. It also gives you lots of chances to go, wait a second, it looks like I'm about to crash into metal. I should probably stop here and ask a bigger question of somebody with more experience. It also gives you a chance to ask, when does this game stop? How low is z gonna go? And the answer was right there at the top of your G-code, there at your Z-min line. Your tool is not going to go lower than negative 40 thou. Here I am at Z equals negative 30 thou. So let's take an even closer look at where we are in the mill. Go ahead and push this spindle stop button. This isn't going to stop your whole program from executing. Your program's going to be in a state of feed hold, but it is going to stop the spindle from spinning around such that the door will unlock such that you can open it and look closely at where you are. And look at that. My tool has come down just to the right of my material, and it looks like it is about deep enough to cut the top off my material. Seeing this also gives me a sense of what's going to happen next. The tool is going to go an itty little bit farther down to 40 thou below zero, and then it's going to cut off the top, as I saw in my fusion simulation. This notion of what's going to happen next is the critical piece. All right, shut the door and resume the spinning of the spindle by pressing this forward button to start spinning it forward. You'll get a warning saying, I'm about to start spinning very fast. And say yes by hitting the enter button. Check that the spindle really is spinning again. And then go ahead and turn your coolant back on so that as we start cutting metal, we have the coolant that we need to keep the tool from overheating and melting the aluminum. And then press cycle start and keep your finger over the feed hold button and listen. What you're listening for is the sound of that tool encountering your metal for the very first time. Listen for the sound of it cutting, a nice low hum, and then listen for the sound of it exiting your material back out into air. And when you hear it exit, press feed hold. Turn off your coolant, stop the spindle temporarily, open the door and take a good look to see if you held it at the right moment. You should see the tool has made its very first pass across your material, cutting 40 thou worth of material 
off the top. Okay, now let's finish the job. Turn the coolant back on, turn the spindle back on, press enter to proceed past the warning, and then press cycle start to let the tool swoop around and make its second pass across your material. Good, and if you want, you can finish your whole program this way at 10% feed rate. And if you're feeling very comfortable, you can start inching up the feed rate to 20% and then 30%. I would max out at about 50% where you're cutting a little bit closer to 100% of your commanded speed, but still giving yourself some time to react and learn and get familiar. One way or another, you will get to the end of your program and the spindle will lift up to G53Z0. When the program finishes entirely, the light will flash green, indicating that you can open the door and reach in and pull out your work. Use the vise handle to loosen the vise, Pull out your cube, pull out the parallels, look at the surface that you cut, feel it with the pad of your finger and your fingernail. Take it to the video microscope and look at it there too. Congratulations on getting this far. It is many, many, many preparatory steps to be able to load work, find it, and cut it inside of a CNC mill.